Good morning and happy Saturday, everybody. So today's sketch is this very mixed media heavy sketch. It looks like it's like um, got several layers of papers, a doily, some tags, another doily over here, strip notebook paper, some florals, but then it's a lot of drips underneath. And so I've been trying to figure out what I was going to do and how I was going to make it. I've done mixed media in the past. It's probably not my favorite go-to kind of a thing, but it's not impossible for me. I was just kind of struggling with where to go with it. So you're going to go along for the ride with me because I still don't know where I'm going and we're just going to kind of create as we go. So the first thing I did was I found a picture. So this is just a picture from, I want to say it was February of this year, the last big snowstorm we had. And it was just my husband and I out shoveling out eight inches of snow from our driveway um, <clears throat> to try and help with the mixed media look. And so I wasn't um, dictated by color. I did print it four by four and on black and white. So then I just went and I decided I was going to look for my background paper that I thought would be able to go with this. <clears throat> Excuse me. And I found this kind of a blue gray with the dots that to me spoke snow and winter. And this is from Pink Fresh, A Case of the Blahs. And yeah, kind of represents the feel of shoveling in the driveway. So I figure I could use that. And then I was torn between whether or not I wanted to use this as my background or if I wanted to go with a solid white and then, um, you know, do the mixed media with this as my frame. I've decided I'm, I am going to stick with this as being my background. And the reason I'm doing that is I am going to behind I'm going to go ahead and take and put white gesso down and I might do it with you on, on camera. I figure I'll cut this paper down and frame it on the white and back it so it has a little bit of heft and it will keep it from curling down the road. So off camera I'm going to trim this down to a, probably 11 and a half by 11 and a half. Now for two of my matting I grabbed out these two pink fresh as well. These, this one is from Felicity and this one is from Life Noted. So I've got three different pink fresh collections. And when you put this one by itself on here, it doesn't look right, but I wanted the houses. And so I thought the houses kind of represented our house and adulting and shoveling snow. And in this paper, it had the grayish blue, so it's pulling that color out. But then I had choice between like an orange or the teal, and so that's why I kind of grabbed that teal color. So this is kind of where I'm thinking I want, and then I'm thinking I'm going to go ahead and mat this on white. So I may gut part of the inside of the back paper and mat this on white on top of here. So that's another layer, and I might find some scraps to tuck in here and there, but figured this is where I'm going to start. So I'm going to go off camera. I'm going to trim these down, mat everything, and then when I come back, we'll go ahead and gesso, and then we'll figure out the next step. So hold on one moment. Okay, so off camera, I went ahead and matted my photo onto a piece of the white cardstock that I just gutted from the inside of my frame. So I have that. I did cut down my background paper to 11 half by 11 half. So I have a quarter inch ish um, frame going around. And then the other thing that I did to kind of give it that grunge feel like the sketch has is I did take my distress tool from close to my heart. You can get you can get these at Hobby Lobby, wherever, but um, you can also just use your scissors and run that down the side of your paper if you don't have one of these tools. But I did, so, um, and I think Tim Holtz even sells something. So anyways, I took my distress tool and I roughed up the edges on the background for the photo and then the two pieces of layering six by six that I'm gonna use. 
So again, I'm, I'll figure out how I'm going to layer them, but I'm thinking something to that effect. Again, I want the houses to show because, again, it's us doing something on the house. Now, what I did pull out was my Liquitex Basics gesso, and I'm going to gesso probably like in a square right around in here. And then I pulled out a few things that I thought I could do some layering with. So I've got the scrap piece of vellum that I thought I could um, put behind in different layers behind the photo, rough those up. I have a piece of rickrack that I thought could be the element that's running down the side here. I have a viewfinder that I cut out with my Cricut. And somebody had asked um, how I got it, and I just took... Um, if you go and you Google images, you can pull up like any kind of a um, JPEG or PNG, um, whatever image, and then you can pull it into Design Studio and you're able to clear it, clear it out. So in this case, it was just probably a, like a two color image. So I just had to delete the one color of where I wanted everything not to be. And then you're able to pull it into this design space and cut it out. And if you have a Cricut, there's a ton of tutorials on Facebook on how to pull in your own image and do a cut file. So, um, and that's how I learned. And I would just have like YouTube up and then my design space up and follow along. So there's some great tutorials. So I figured this could be, you know, a little piece that I can tuck in. I grabbed in this tissue paper that's kind of got some silver sparkle in it. Again, it kind of reminded me of snow, so I'm going to use that as a layer also behind my photo. And then I pulled in a bunch of doilies that I'm going to use for tucking in between all these different layers. So I'm going to go ahead and let's go ahead and first of all gesso. And then I'm probably going to put you on pause again and I'm going to mat my the tissue paper under my photo and um, the vellum and then I'll come back and we'll just start building and I'm leaning towards my drips being in silver I'm trying to kind of stick with that silvery white color like you'd see in snow and I also still need to find a tag so um, let me go ahead and put you on pause or no we're gonna just so together and then I'll put you on pause. So let me grab that. I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna kind of take my pencil and this isn't gonna be, I'm going to the inside of where I want my mat so you won't see it. It'll get covered up by um, the gesso and by, I just know I need to extend my gesso beyond this line. And see, you can't see it, but when I put the gesso, if I go about an inch beyond that, I'll know that I'm at least to the edges. So here's where I kind of have my rough, and I'll go pretty wide around it. I'm just going to do um, like Missy Widden does. She just uses her fingers and spreads it out and kind of gets that. And it, what it does is if even if you have like um, busy paper, it's great at like... Um, it will mute the um, background paper. So if you have some, it's really busy and it's um, clashing with something that you already have. If you just kind of put some gesso or white acrylic paint down or any color paint, um, what it does is it just kind of blends it in and allows you to um, make your photo the focal point again. Whereas right now, if you go busy on busy on busy, sometimes the photo gets lost. And so the purpose of me doing this, though, is I want to put additional mixed media down. And what this does is it adds like a barrier to it so that um, it keeps your paper from warping too terribly bad. And we want to get that look of the drips. And I think I want a little bit more on the edges. And I'm not real concerned about the center part as much because that's going to get covered up. But I am doing it only because 
that's where I'm going to start my drips. And so I need that to have the, the barrier in there to help it. And you can tell when you put color on top of plain paper, it will soak in. Whereas when you put color on top of gesso, it stays on top and allows you to manipulate it a little bit more. And come on, don't want a lot. I think this should be about it. Yeah, that will do it. And it's still with the white. I could have gone with clear, but I kind of like the white because that allowed it to look kind of, again, like the snow, which is the whole thing I'm looking for. And the other thing, um, like you can already tell, it's kind of doing a little bit of warping. It will dry and it will straighten a little bit. But you'll find that when you put them in your books, the weight of the books will really hold it down a lot. And it won't be as bad as it seems. Um and it kind of is a fun, a fun kind of little texture in your album. All right, so I'm going to go ahead and put you on pause. I'm going to let this dry. And again, um, I think what I'm going to do is use um, my silver acrylic paint. And I'm just going to um, dilute it down and run drips. And then I'll be right back. Okay, so off camera, I went ahead and let this dry. So it's it's pretty dry right now. It's a little bit from the back. It's a little bit um, damp, but not too bad. So I think that's good enough that I can go ahead and start doing the mixed media. Now off camera, what I did was I did attach these two layers together. So I have my picture and then I used the vellum and then I did a couple layers of tissue paper. And then I just took the, um, cut the viewfinder in half and two of the doilies in half. And I just layered them into this cluster. And then all I did was to kind of give it a different look, I stapled each of the corners in an X. So hopefully you can see that. So this kind of is kind of done. And then I did put the Rick Rack here. So when it goes on, it's going to look like this. Now, I'm not totally done because um, it does have like a tab and a tag and a title. Now, um, I cut with my Cricut off camera these little bits that we'll put on after we do the mixed media. And then the other thing I did was I grabbed out um, these Doodlebug stickers or um, alphas. And what I did was, for the words that are going to be my title, I took my silver pen that, um, and I just um, colored in the letters of the title. So it's going to be Snow Fun. And I'm kind of doing a play on it because I have everything in lowercase, but the word N-O is going to be in uppercase. So basically it's no fun because, you know, us when we're in our late 50s, early 60s, snow is no fun. So that's going to be my title that I'll put down afterwards. And like I said, I'll stick these in. And then I'm, I'm probably going to look for something to do a tag with. Or I might find a snowflake or something. But we'll do that after we get the mixed media done. So I'm going to go ahead and put these to the side. Now I was, and I've got my little box that I'm going to use for my mixed media. Now, sadly, I cannot find my um, water bottle. I don't know where it went. Um, I'm thinking my cat knit it because I use my water bottle occasionally when he's being naughty. And so I'm thinking he probably hid it from mom because <laughs> he doesn't like the water bottle. So I'm going to put everything this side but this. Now, I was going to use the acrylic paint, but then I remembered I have this sea foam, and I'm not sure if I want to use it or not because it would bring in some of that sea foam color, or if I just want to go with tinsel. 
think I'm going to start it with tinsel just to see how it looks because right now there's sea foam in here but it's very subtle and it's not like in your face to clash with this background and so I think holding it up to it I'm leaning towards no. So I'm just going to go ahead and shake this up a little bit and all of you who watch um, Inky Quill can sing the Shake 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 song even though it's not gold color shine. And I think I'm going to spray it and then try and drip it. And unfortunately, I don't have the water to move it around, but I'm hoping with the gesso that's enough that it will allow it to drip. And again, keep in mind that this is going to be a pretty big area. So I just need to get it. And I might, again, pencil it just so I can kind of see on the inside. where this is going to go. So I know I need it really on the outskirts of this, but I can blob it to the center where it's covered. So if it sprays funky, it won't matter because it'll get covered up. And now I think I gotta drip it. And let's try and drip it. Liking that. Let me grab it. Let me grab a uh, paintbrush. Maybe that will work a little bit better. Otherwise, I may have to go find something to move it around a little bit. Let's see if we can get this to drip. There it goes. All right, and I don't need a lot of dripping. Just need a little. I'm gonna leave it like that. And then I'm just going to splatter. Okay. Then what I'm going to do is I am going to leave that in there. I'm going to take this out. And move that out of the way. that brush in a minute. All right. Now I think what I want to do is put this up on foam. I 
big fun foam. Where is it? Oh, here it is. Oh, I think it's buried. So let me put this up there. Let's just go ahead and put foam tape up on this. Oops. Like I said, this is the challenging one for me. There's just some people like Missy Whitten who is just so good at the mixed media stuff. And it's just not my cup of tea. I try. I can. I know that you just kind of keep layering and layering and layering, and eventually it looks good. But it's just not my thing. And some people have their strong suits, and it's not mine. I think I said at the beginning I was on Instagram, and I was kind of inspired because I was really um, struggling, and Colleen had her Instagram up, and she did not... It didn't look like she had really any mixed media on it. And her layout was beautiful. And so um, I was like, no, I'm going to go ahead and try it without. And her link to her um, channel, her Instagram channel, is in the description box below if you want to check Colleen's stuff out. She's got some beautiful stuff. All right. So let's go ahead. I'm just going to go ahead and remove the paper. And since I have no nails, I'm just going to use my little Cricut tool to peel up the edge. And here we go. And maybe I should take some inspiration from Missy. And maybe I could throw some thread in. So I may go and put you guys off camera and see if I can find some gray or silver thread. And maybe that will kind of add to it as well. I know I've got to still find something to make a tab. I'm not sure what color I want. If I want to just go with white or what color. All right. That's off. And this is still drying, but I think I can go ahead and put this down right here, like so. And it's just enough drips for me. Like I said, I'm not huge mixed media. And let me see if we can get our title on. I think I've got to start with the N.O. And I don't want to cover up my little staples. And this was just taking um, one of the Cricut markers. They have a metallic set. And I really like it. And, and so I did it on the backing sheet. And that way, if I went over, it didn't matter because, it, you know, when you put, peel it off the sheet, it comes off clean. And I am going to have to put some glue behind this. Snow. And the U. And the N. It's going to have to shift over just a little bit more. Maybe like right there. Or I could do it right on the picture because all it is is our driveway. Yeah, I'm going to do it right on the picture. Yeah, I kind of like that because it kind of blends in a little bit, but it stands off enough that you can tell. 
And again, it's just my husband's over there. We're just shoveling. Smell fun. All right. So I've got my title on. We've got the layers in. I've got my drips. So I still think I need a little tab or something. And I have another piece of this blue. Or maybe I can even go from underneath. Well, I got all the stuff on. Um, I'm going to go and see if I can get another sheet of this pink paisley. And maybe I'll do my tab out of that. And that brings a little bit to the front. And then I'm going to see if I can find some string. And we'll see if we can put that in there. And then we're going to call this one done. So I'm going to put you on. Oh, we've still got to put these in. Let me find the string, let this dry a little bit more, and I will be right back. Okay, so I got my punch out, and I did punch this. So I'm just going to go ahead and add a little adhesive to it. Um, kind of mad because this is kind of on an angle. And I don't think I can get, oh, maybe. I wanted the bottom layer wonky and I wanted the picture straight. I don't know if I can get this off. Let me see. Yep, I might be lucky here. Okay, yay. I have to add some extra adhesive. Okay, that makes me happier. Let me just go ahead and add a little adhesive to it. Just to give it a little more oomph. Alright, so... There, now the picture's straight to the frame. And that makes me happier. And then I'm just going to add a little bit of adhesive behind this one. And there's a little pop up there. And then go ahead and add these down here. And they've got it kind of all clustered. Kind of here, so I'm just going to kind of do the same thing. Maybe. No, I want it like that. Maybe this one in the center. There. I just won't use the one. All right, let me go and take a little glue and glue this down. All right, and then I found some black, but then I also found this kind of gray navy blue. Um, and I think I want to use this. So let me go ahead and, of course, it's a new one, so I haven't opened it. Let me find the end here. And we're just going to do nest a little bit of the color in it from behind. If you haven't watched Missy Whidden, I really recommend you do her because she just, she's just amazing. She makes it look so easy to do. Um, all right, why are you not coming out of there? I have no nails and it's like really jammed in. There it goes. When all else fails, use your teeth. All right. So what she does is she just takes a big, you know, takes 
of a big bunch of thread and she'll trim it and then she just kind of bunches it up and makes like a, a messy nest with it and then she'll kind of shove it underneath and it just adds that little pop of color that you need. I'm going to do a little over on this side, maybe a little bit up above. So I'll shove a little bit under there. I want the leaves on top. And I'll add a little bit more glue to those just to make sure they don't they stay in place. And then we'll maybe put a little bit right here underneath this tab. And then I'm going to call this one done. Like I said, this one wouldn't be my strongest layout. Um, you know, it's doing the one photo, which... I can do, but it's not my strongest. Okay, so off camera, I'll go ahead and add a little bit more glue. But that's going to be it. I'm going to call this one done. Um, again, you know, get out your messy stuff and see what you can do. You know what? It's just about playing and challenging yourself to go a direction that you wouldn't normally do. And this definitely challenged me. And then I'll probably just do a little journaling about, you know, shoveling the snow. But um, not a lot of my mixed media peeking out. And I'm okay with that. You can see a little bit of the silver sprayed on here. And um, the white from the gesso. And that's more than enough for me. So I want to thank you guys for stopping by. And we will see you again tomorrow for the next layout. And also tomorrow is the next... Um, edition of our um, build a page so i'll be picking papers tomorrow so thank you for stopping by and we will see you tomorrow